Wang, Ronan here, and I am once again highlighting the Imperial Japanese Navy destroyer Minakaza. This is going to be the second of two. Uh, the first, unfortunately, <laughs> the teams were about half bot, half player. This game has all players, which I was very happy about. And it actually, I, it's in my opinion, was a pretty good game. Now, the other game uh, really did come down to the, the, the last kill good luck, for everyone. Us to kind of swing things in our favor. We were down by one point for quite a while trying to finish off a battleship, but once we did that, the game was over. This game, this really could have gone either way. It was, I think, well played on both sides. Of course, always have your fair share of potato on every team, but, um, you know, sometimes uh, potatoes can really shine, and sometimes your team just has one less potato than the other, and that can make a difference too. Now, uh, as a lifelong potato, uh, I certainly don't mean to be denigrating when I say that, but, uh, you know, the, the facts are matchmaking can uh, play a part in uh, your win and loss ratio. Not not the big part, not the biggest part. The biggest part is how much you know about the game and how much you learn about the maps and what your ship's uh, weapons capabilities are, what their defense systems are, uh, you know, smoke, hydro, uh, use of radar, and the tactical awareness to keep an eye on the minimap and be thinking things like, what might I run into here? Does it have hydro? Is there a radar up there? Are there aircraft that I have to be worried about? And keeping all of that in your mind at all times, that will help you have a better win rate. Now, for some players, or none of that really matters. They're here to play an arcade game, and there's nothing wrong with that. Now, as I often do, and it's generally my custom, I'm playing a destroyer. It's kind of a stealthy destroyer, so I'm going to try and secure a cap. Now, this is a really dangerous cap to secure because uh, if a destroyer is about midway between myself and the Gremiashi there over in the Alpha Cap and throws torpedoes across this cap, they're usually going to do so at this northern edge of the cap, and I would be sitting broadside to that. Now, I have to hope that the Shiratsuyu is not in that area and that it is in fact up at the charlie cap because that's very often yep there it is that's very often how things get spawned and he probably spawned where i was uh, on the opposite side of where i was and chose to go to the charlie cap now our minsk uh you know speaking of potato he's just pushing right in the minsk is not a get close destroyer at least in my opinion it is a stay back and use your guns stay alive as long as you can and burn things down destroyer but he well, he's just rushing right out of Hawkins and uh, uh, West Virginia and the Shiratsuyu. And is there something else over there, too? And he's just he's just going to keep pushing until he dies. Well, you can't fix that kind of uh, specialness, I guess. So, uh, Lars the Tool. No, Lars Tool. Lars Tool. There it is. My apologies for mispronouncing the name there. He's finished off by the West Virginia 44's secondaries. Having secured the cap and knowing that Nicholas was headed this way, I'm going to go over here and try and keep him spotted on the team. Right now, it's Shiratsuyu against and, uh, Sharnhorse 43 against West Virginia 44, Hawkins, and the Shiratsuyu. So Omaha and Sharnhorse against Shiratsuyu, West Virginia, Hawkins, and now Nicholas. And I'm going to get over here and see what I can do to try and even the odds. Now, I'm going to use the island to provide me cover even if the uh, even if the Nicholas decided to come this way and I could always smoke in, 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 at need but I wanted to come south a little bit to get my torpedoes in range of where the Koenigsberg might be hiding in the smoke now I'll move up this way get my guns in the right position you can see they do not traverse quickly glacially slow and there's the Nicholas and I can reset the cap slow down he's going to be aiming and speeding up see his guns trying to spin this way try one more shot off and the reload on these guns is slow so slow that if I had not basically come to stop there's no way I would have got another volley off on him then I had to smoke because the Hawkins I did land a torpedo on the Koenigsberg because the Hawkins was right there and he could well he could probably one shot me really now I don't want to move into the cap I'm actually going to fall back a little bit here. And all I really did was delay them. 
I can't really afford to get spotted. So instead, what I'm doing is I'm spotting for my team. Target. I'm hoping Omaha is going to finish off that Nicholas. But if Omaha's a new player, he may be focused elsewhere, and it looks like he is just kind of throwing shells somewhere. Nope. He is actually firing on the Nicholas now. So I have to hope that he survives long enough to finish off Nicholas and that West Virginia or Königsberg or the Hawkins doesn't finish off the Omaha first. I mean, Omaha was sailing kind of broadside to everybody. He's got himself angled now, at least a little bit. And I shoot over the island. Oh, it's just been a shot. That tells me I'm being detected from behind there, so I need to accelerate, use the island again. Attention, reporting the target position. Angle to narrow my profile, and I'm going to use my own smoke again and see if I can't catch the Hawkins against the corner of the island there. Probably not, but if he backs up away from the island, if he did go face first into it, then maybe I have a chance. You can see the torpedoes from the Shiratsuyu. Nicholas is, well, pushing in, and position. we did lose that Omaha, so I need to get over here and try and help Teammate. the Sharnhorst. I need your I'm just creating a little bit of distance between myself and the Hawkins, and hoping one of those torpedoes will find its way to the hull of the Hawkins. Sharnhorst finishes off the Nicholas with his main guns, and our Arizona finishes off the Hobart. So we're down three ships, and the red team is down three ships. The red team has two caps, and they have a lead. Uh, I mentioned it in the last video. I'll mention it again here. As I do understand the Engine boost the deactivated. Hawkins. There is a bug in the game as our Arizona gets sunk by their Duke of York. There's a bug in the game, and the scoreboard is reversed. So right now, right now, uh, well, is it? <laughs> It has been for some time, so I'm guessing it is. So I'm guessing that we are currently, uh, what we're going to see. No, it looks like, it looks like for whatever reason, this one seems like it's right. So you can see we're down 295 points to 414. We don't have a cap, so we're not getting any more points. And I'm trying like mad to get close enough to get torpedoes on this West Virginia. I've only got seven kilometers of range, and now I'm thinking, hey, those might be dual-purpose torps. I might land some on West Virginia. I might land some on Hawkins. Either way, I'm still pushing to this side in order to try and help my teammate in the Sharn Horse 43. I want to try and help finish up Shiratsuyu, who is really banged up, but his torpedoes are devastatingly powerful. Our old-school Navy in the U-69 takes out the Red Congo and, and plus Ong. In the Colorado finishes off our Piotr Veliki. I do manage a couple more torpedo hits on the Hawkins and finish him off. So that's kill number one, 35,599 damage, 97,000 spotting damage so far. Torpedoes. And you're going to find yourself, if you're focused on it, you're, you're able to do quite a bit of spotting for your team in the Minikaze if you spec for detection radius. You're going to need the four-point commander skill for concealment, but you can get it down to 5.4 kilometers of detection radius, which is really, really good. Now, why did I throw the torpedoes out there? Because the Shiratsuyu may not know I'm here, and he might have turned to get closer to the Sharnhorst. He might have gone the other direction. Since he went this way, I'm happy to try and finish him off here where he's at. I just need to land one more shell. And I just wait and wait and wait and wait and wait for the guns to reload. And is that enough? It is. See, yeah, I slowed down, turned in, trying to avoid shells. Now, if he threw torpedoes out, he probably threw them at the Sharn Horse before I got here. All stations requesting fire. I have to keep my nose that way just long enough to make sure there aren't torpedoes coming. Now I can turn. And now our Sharn Horse 43 is facing off with Gremiashi. Now, Gremiashi is, uh, of course, a Attention. Tier 5 premium Russian destroyer. It has uh, really target. nice torpedoes and great guns. The one drawback of the guns is that they do not traverse well at all. They're super slow. And the ship is very fast, so it can be hard if you're maneuvering to keep your guns on target. And, uh, you know, Gremiashi was, was considered back in the day 
strong enough at the tier that they decided, you know what, we're not going to make that one available anymore. You have to pull that out of a crate or something. It's a, if in capable hands, it's a very, very good destroyer. So it felt really nice here in the not too distant future when I was able to finish off the Gramiashi and I'm in a Kaza. So I'm telling our Sharnhorst, you can see there in the chat, that I really need to get a cap because they just continue to expand their lead. It's 547 to 290. And that just continues to grow in their favor. So if I can secure this cap, our, all those guys down there at the Alpha Cap, they have to finish off that Colorado eventually, right? There he goes. So the other Sharnhorst 43 on our team finishes off that Colorado. And now our guys should be able to finish off the, get to secure the Alpha Cap. Königsberg's pushing in. The only thing with uh, the ability to get guns on him is maybe Hawkins and the U69, but U69 is probably being hydroed right now, and he may not survive very much longer. Now I'm having to just wait for the cap to be secured. Sharnhorst, fortunately, is able to outrun those. Now, on the off chance that Gramiashi moved this way to get closer to keep torpedoes on Sharnhorst, I went ahead and threw my torpedoes in there. It'll be back up in 33 seconds, so it's really not a big deal. You can see our Hawkins and Rook are just now coming out from behind the island down there at the Alpha Cap. And Rook manages to get off a really nice shot on Mackinson. And now, now things are looking a little bit better. It's 478 to 370, but I'm about to secure this cap. And I'm looking to see if I see anti-aircraft anywhere over there. Now, if you're, if you're not familiar, battleship players will use their uh, airstrikes to see if they can locate where the destroyer's at. They just throw them out there, even though they know there's not a sub there. And if the destroyer player has not turned off his AA, the AA will fire off. And you can see where the destroyer's at in that way. So, nicely done. Player of the nearest Sharn Horse 43. Okay, so there's the Gremiashi. He's got really hard-hitting guns. I don't want to trade in a gunfight with him. But I'm looking at his turrets, they're not really pointed this way. So I'm able to get off a shot without any worry of him being able to shoot back. I only do 561 damage, but hey, I'll take it. And I'm pretty sure he's going to head that way. So I'm going to preemptively put the torpedoes out, and then I'm going to just sit here and wait for him. I know he's coming, but I'm going to have the Sharn Horse right behind me. So I'm in detection radius now. I'm going to put guns on him. I know I'm going to take a shot, but then I can smoke. And I'm going to hope that he will smoke as well, because he's detected. There's the smoke. And now I'm going to just kind of quietly be thinking, come on, torpedoes. That's right. You have nothing to worry about, Grammy. Actually, just go ahead and back up a little bit to avoid those shells. And if you do, boom. Now I can move forward. I've got the Sharn Horse right in my hip pocket. And this game is all over with the shouting. So, three kills, 42,989 damage. I'm going to make a run for the Bravo cap, see if I can get that secured. You can see I pointed my nose toward the last location of the Gramiashi. Why did I do that? Because I wanted to minimize the chance of one of those torpedoes connecting. He threw one volley with his guns, right? And then nothing. So I was pretty sure torpedoes were coming. I didn't want to cross to the south, even though that's really all that's left of the red team. Because if I had, I might have eaten one of those torpedoes. So I can run straight ahead into the cap, try and help get that secured. And right now I'm just thinking that I really hope I'm able to get the cap secured before they finish off the Duke of York. Because it looks to me like he's making a run for it and try and hide behind the island. But uh, death... It's coming for you in the Duke of York. Well, he may have been focused a little bit too much on what was behind him and not quite enough on what was directly ahead of him, despite the of the warning indicator that I'm sure he was hearing. Boom. And a whole bunch of his people that were out on the deck just got thrown onto the rocks. Well, that means one thing. It means he's going to continue to take damage, continue to be visible. And in seven seconds, I'm going to have this cap. Minikaza. It's fun. It's definitely not my favorite um, Tech Tree Tier 5 of the torpedo type ships. Um, in the Tech Tree line, I, T-22 is probably my favorite. It's really well-rounded. Really well-rounded. It's got decent guns. The HE doesn't, I mean, 
the HE on the T22 is like firing, basically like firing marshmallows. It does, it's like 1,200 damage, some small amount of damage. You're just praying for a fire. But the AP, well, it, it hits pretty hard. And the torpedoes hit uh, harder than these and uh, are faster. And the reload is really not that bad. I, I like the T-22 a lot as far as tech tree uh, torpedo destroyers go. As far as uh, gunboats, well, then you got you got definitely got some choices there. And uh, I'll try to cover over the next month or so some of the uh, available tech tree gunboats in these tiers or this tier um, <laughs> that's gonna do it right there yeah, that's four kills I'll take it <laughs> 40 44 thousand damage essentially but boy ski uh, at tier five it's, it's fun to play as a gunboat uh, Nicholas so now we're taking a look at these numbers here 16 shell hits Six torpedoes, incapacitations, a couple there. Four ships finished off. Set one fire, three floods. Uh, defended a cap four times, picked up a couple caps, assisted in a cap, and spotted five ships. Decent coin experience. Top the scoreboard with 1801. Tip of the hat to our Rook player and our U69 player, as well as the enemy teams, Gremiashi and West Virginia, both with almost a 1,000 points apiece. Well-played game. Uh, by uh, quite a few players, I think, on both teams. Detailed report. Uh, some decent damage on the Hawkins. The Gremiashi. Shiratsuyu was just to finish him off. Same thing with the Duke of York. A little bit of damage on Königsberg and just to scratch the Nicholas, essentially. But uh, every kill helps. And, you know, there's just one more volley or one more set of torps from any of those ships could have finished off a, a friendly. So I'm glad that I was able to do that. Just taking a look at all the particulars, 48 torpedoes launched, six of them landed, 16 shells out of 40 landed, 206,000 potential damage, did a little, just a little bit of spotting damage, not much. Decent credits and XP. Thanks a lot for joining me. I really appreciate it. Hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please like and subscribe. Maybe tell a friend, and I'll see you next time.